video is going to walk you through how to add a slope scoring system to street center lines as part of a process to calculate the level of traffic stress for cyclists in an area. So I'm working in a section of Pittsburgh um, in Pennsylvania, and um, I have an area of interest. Um, it's a study, it's an area in which um, I'm working on strategies for economic um, um, and community development. And part of that is um, connectivity to existing districts and just overall um, making this a more bicycle friendly community. Currently, there are no bike lanes within this community, um, and I want to assess the street infrastructure for the potential to add bike lanes to this community. Um, as you can see, this is a very hilly terrain, and so one of the factors that we want to um, incorporate into this analysis um, is the um, level, is the just the difficulty to, to, to traverse the area based on um, the slope. And so I want to add slope data, which is exist in raster form to the street segments, which exist in vector form. Um, and so there's a multi-step process to do that. So the first step is um, I need to, um, what I would like to do is create a table that tells me um, for every um, street segment, uh, so for every segment of street um, along my study area, like this one, um, what is the average um, slope score um, for that street segment so that I can factor into other um, scoring systems like speed, number of lanes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the first thing I need to do is create a table from this raster to, to, to join to my streets. Um, but I can't create a ta uh, there's a tool called zonal statistics to table um, that will do that for me, but I can't run that on this raster because this is a continuous raster and I need to convert this to a discrete raster. Um, a discrete raster um, is uh, a different um, type of raster that allows you to have attribute tables we can talk about the differences between continuous and discrete rasters in a different video. For now, we just know we need to convert this over to a discrete raster as the first step. Um, if you try to run a zonal statistic um, to table, um, so zonal statistic to table, and just to, as a, it summarizes the values of a raster within zones of another data set and reports the result as a table. That's what it does. And our zones in our case is the segments of the streets. Um, if I were to try to um, run this um, tool in my slope, using my slope raster, um, you will see that it's going to tell me, nope, can do it. You do not have the appropriate type of raster to run this on. Um, X means no, can't do it. So um, the first thing I need to do, as I mentioned, is convert this. So the way that you can convert this is you can reclassify your raster. Um, so if you run a reclassify tool and you input your slope um, raster in there, um, it gives you a table with ranges of, um, of, of how you could change your values. Um, so for instance, um, let me just start this from scratch. So I'm going to search for and find the um, reclassify tool. And when you open the reclassify tool, you input your slope raster in there. I know that the maximum slope in my um, study area is around 2000. So I'm just going to be on a safe side and change this maximum value to um, 3000 um, rather than the default that it gave me. Um, but my scoring system, and so typically you want to establish a common scoring system among all of your variables. So like an example of that would be something like this. Um, so for instance, 
Um, if I have a scoring system of one being easy and five being hard, and the inputs that overall feed my analysis are things like slope and land cover, you want to make sure you have a common scoring system for both. And so in this instance, perhaps um, any slope um, that is 30 degrees or higher is a hard and any one that um, is one, um, you know, one or less is, is, is medium or excuse me, is easy. You wanna do that the same sort of scaling system for land cover. So if I say that, you know, muddy waters, um, land cover type 50 is hard, um, then that should get like a 4.2 or a five or water is, you know, impossible, that should get like a five, a similar a common scoring system for all of your variables. And also you have to do the research um, and, or, and or consult with the subject matter expert to um, understand what is difficulty levels for, um, for traversing an area, um, um, what, is, what is considered difficult for the average human um, when, we're, when we're factoring in slope. Today I'm just gonna make up some numbers um, and I'm just gonna say that um, my slope raster, you can see it's anywhere from zero to over a thousand degree. This is very, very hilly area. Um, and so I'm just gonna make up on a scale of one to five um, what, what these ranges are in terms of difficulty. Um, I do not know um, for sure if any of this is accurate. Again, you really need to consult with a subject matter expert to understand if these are if this is accurate to say that a slope degree of 20 to 25 is you know um, hard or easy or whatever. So I'm just going to make up some numbers for this exercise um, and then run the tool. And it's going to be on a scale of one to five. Okay, so you input your numbers. I'm just gonna um, open one that I recently did so we don't have to wait. Um, so I reclassified everything. I made up a, a, a scale for now. Um, and then um, once the other, um, after you've input the, the scoring system that you have, you may also wanna set your environments. I like to have my, um, th this raster have the same kind of extents and cell size as the input. Um, so I'm going to change the processing extent to be the same as my slope raster um, and my cell size to be the same as my um, slope raster. Um, so they're going to be equal in size and equal in pixel size. So that's my environment settings and all of my parameters are um, input as shown. Um, and then I run the tool. I've already run this tool before this video, so let's just take a look at what um, what we have. All right. So now I have a, a discrete raster. So rather than having a continuous raster where each pixel has a different value, I have a discrete raster where each pixel is either a one, two, three, four, or five. And that is a scoring system um, around that, that is based on research um, um, around difficulty to traverse the area on a bicycle um, given the slope value. So the next step is I wanna transfer these scores to the streets. So it's still a raster and I can't join street vector data with raster. So I have to convert this to a table where each table has an average score and the segment, the street segment that um, is associated with that average score. So now that we have the discrete raster, we have the ability to run a Sonal statistics as table. Oops, this is a spatial analyst, right? Um, I've already run this tool, so I'm just gonna go to my history and just open it up. So the input for the input or feature zone data, um, that's going to be our streets. And the zone field is going to be my streets um, object ID. Every single um, street segment that you see here in white 
Every single street segment in here has a unique identifier, a um, 1,175 street segments, and they all have a unique identifying number associated to them. So that's what I want in, um, in, in, in my zone field. Um, so for every zone field, I'm going to get a something, some information about the raster. The input value raster, that's going to be the reclassified slope that we just created. And the output, you can just, it's going to be a table. Um, and I'm going to call that table reclass um, slope to table. So this is just a, a um, reclassified slope converted over to a table. And the statistic type that I want, I'm particularly interested in average values, um, you know, slope scoring values. Um, but you can choose all or you can choose these other types of statistics. Um, and then set your environment settings to be the same as your inputs as we did before. Or actually, I'm sorry, no environment settings. This is a table. Forgive me. No environment settings. This is a table. Um, so no need to do that. Once you run this tool, it creates a table. And if you open this table, this is the tool here, my reclass slope to table. And if you open this table, you now have an average score based on the scoring system that you've determined for slope. Um, you have this slope scoring system that you've determined. You now have an average score for each street segment ID here. So now what I need to do is get this information that came from a raster to a table to my street center lines layer. And the way that I do that is you run a join tool. Um, so if you search for and find, um, search for uh, add a join, it's a data management tool, joins layers to another um, based on a common field. We have in this um, raster to table, we have the object ID and in our street center lines, we have object ID, that's our common field. So we're gonna add that join. So we input, the um, input table in this case is the street center lines because I want a street center line layer with this table added to it. So that's our input table. Um, and our field, our common field is going to be the object ID. The table that we're joining to our street center lines layer, the white streets in the map, is this reclass um, slope to table that we just created. And the object ID is the join field, the common, the common field that both tables have. Always validate your joins. It's always a good idea to validate your join. Um, I got an error because this join has already been um, done, but you should get a message that says 1,175 records have joined successfully. If it doesn't say that, then we have a problem. Um, you have to investigate that problem. Add your join using this tool and not through the table of contents. You can add your join this way. For some reason, it's a little clunky. Um, for st I, I'm not sure if it's just particular to this map or what. I don't know. It didn't work for me, but um, it works perfectly when I use the add the join tool. Great, so now, now I have um, data about um, the uh, scoring system that I've established added to my street center lines. And so I can symbolize that. Um, I can now have the ability to symbolize my street center lines based on the slope score that I've assigned to each street through that process. So this is again a made up score. These scores should be created based on actual, you know, research and difficulty, but you will see um, the street segments that have the highest scores are the most difficult to traverse based on the slope conditions. And if I turn my slope layer back on, that makes a lot of sense, right? This is a very hilly area and this particular street segment is going down a very hilly area. Um, and so this could be dangerous for a cyclist. And there you have it. This is how you get um, from raster data to a street center line data, part of a process for assessing level, tra level of traffic stress in your street center lines. Please share, like, and subscribe. Thank you.